All right, I think we're on part 12 of Squally. Let's go and uh, enter these data mines and see what we've got going on here. The end of early access content. We're working on pushing more content as soon as possible. If you enjoyed the content thus far, please drop a review on Steam. Oh, oh. So this is, by the way, technically still early access. Um, which if you go to their store page, you can see. I would not have ended the last part uh, where I did if I knew that that was going to be it. Um, so yes, this is technically an early access game. And I say technically because uh, it's been a couple of years. And... Uh, Where's the reviews here? Um, I got people, I saw people on the community board um, asking why there haven't been updates in about a year or so. So maybe this is a dead project, I don't know. But uh, uh, let's see if we got anything down here. Oh, there's one of those tower teleporter things. On one of those tower teleporter things. One of those tower teleporter things. Okay. I guess that is the end of Squally's Adventure for now, anyway. Hopefully more content will be added. This was a lot of fun. It was really great. Learning assembly, uh, making it really accessible. The lexicon is awesome. I like the mini games. Um, Hexus uh, was, I went back and forth on that. It is a fun game. I do enjoy it. Um, it was a bit much. I mean, it, it was too often we were playing it here in the game. Um, but I guess, you know, that's kind of something that you have to put in there to sort of pad it out a little bit. Because if we had gone directly for the quest, and uh, this would have been like 30 minutes of content instead of the several hours that I ended up recording. But uh, because uh, that's it for Squally today, um, at least the adventure so far, this will be a good opportunity to do as I said I would do before and um, go through the hacking tutorials, since those are also a part of the game and uh, a pretty darn good one as well. So um, I haven't done, uh, let's see, there's nothing for assembly editing. There's nothing for pointers. There's one for hex editing and several memory editing. And I did do the first few memory editings, and uh, I got to say, the hacking tutorials—they're—they're uh, they're fun. They're absolutely worth going through. But you should know if you do the tutorials before you play Squally, as I did, uh, that none of what you do in the hacking tutorial applies in Squally at all, because in Squally you're editing assembly in their own UI, and here. For the hacking tutorials, you'll actually need an external tool like Cheat Engine, and you're actually going to be scanning for memory addresses and altering variables, at least for the memory editing, obviously. I, don't, I haven't done the hex editing yet, but I'm assuming it's going to be similar. Um, so, for example, if we do the first one here, you see that we're just presented with a boss, right? And if we... Uh, we can see the boss has 100 health. If we use the lever, it will fire at him, and it will hit him for 87. And if we continue to do that... He heals himself back up to 100. So the only way we're going to be able to do this uh, is to scan for his health. And then we will... Let's see, how can I do this uh, in a way that's a little bit more... Hold on a moment. Let me add a window capture for Cheat Engine. And I'll put that... Down here. That may be kind of small to see, uh, but hopefully you can follow me here. All right, so uh, we scan for a value of 100. We scan for a four byte value. Chances are that's what it is. It would be uh, unusual for the whole number there to be afloat, although obviously it could be. Um, but we can check and see if we have it in this list. We have 2,670 addresses with the value 100 in it right now. But if we change that, so we've decreased that value, we can do a decreased value scan compared to the first scan, and there's only one value left, and it's 87, which matches what we have here for our dude. So we take that, zero, he's dead. So this will be... Tutorial not that these will be the same addresses next time we do this, it absolutely won't be. Uh, this one, so this time we see we have an enemy, it's, a, it's 100 points again. 
uh, but we can see that now it's 100.0 so then this is going to be a float uh, well a float or a double but it'll be a float and we can do similarly over here damage her and now we're at 84.7 so this would be a d value for scan uh, 84.6999 and you can see that it rounds up here in the, to um, 0.7 which makes total sense so let's change the value to zero and she's dead this guy appears to be a tough customer and we don't have a bar above their head so we don't know what the value is exactly we could assume that it is 100 and probably it is uh, but what we can do is we can do an unknown initial value we don't know what it is and we can search for all types now doing this is going to return a tremendous number of results like it's gonna it's gonna be a lot but you can weed them out down from there you know as you go so as you can see we have 392,335,360 addresses here it's so many that it's not even displaying because it's going to take so long to process them. so let's uh, decrease that we know that it was uh we just saw a negative six there so now we know that it decreased by six and that should meet out a good number of them so we're still at uh oh, compared to the first scan i should have done again again decreased by six compared to the first scan so we want to compare to the first scan because we don't want just any value that decreased that's still in our list there's 394 million of the suckers there's gonna be a lot of them that happened to decrease uh, there's gonna be a lot of them that happened to decrease by six so we want to add the additional condition also searching for uh, a value that had and so we can see the initial values All right, so now we are 35,664, which is still a lot, so let's do that again. Let's decrease again by six. This time we won't compare to the first scan because we'll actually have decreased by, well, actually, if we compare to the first scan, we can decrease the value by 12. 73,222. Decrease by 18. Oh, that was six, right? I actually wasn't looking at the screen when that happened. I'll assume it's a six. Uh, 22,000. Oh, this is what time time is this? 24. All right, now compared to the last scan, it actually increased by. Five thousand. Increased by six. That was a nine. See, it is a different value each time. I might have I might have blown right by it. Alright, let's do this a different way. I'm gonna injure him until he reheals himself. Alright, I'm gonna assume first value here is a hundred. Just assuming. Increased by seven. Okay, apparently it's not on. I'm not going to do the decreased value by. Uh, and the reason I'm not going to do that is because I have not been having great luck with that just in general. I don't know if uh, I'm not doing it right or if it's bugged or something uh, in this version or, or maybe both. I don't know. Uh, but the decreased value by has been a little unreliable for me. So I'm just going to go with general decreased values and we're going to leave it down from there. Okay. 
Looks like it's pretty close to 50%, but I still have 34,000. So let's do an increased value now, just a general increased value. Let's look through here. Let's check down closer to the bottom. Looking for values that look like they could legitimately be health water. Well, let's look for unchanged values first. That's a little bit better now. Shut them down to these ones. Not likely that it's sixty eight. Could be this. and see if we can see it all changed. So it seems to be. There we go. That was a little bit tricky, huh? I'm be able to figure it out, though. I think our issue there was, if I remember correctly, when fully healed, the value was 58, which is obviously an odd value to have for a health bar. But uh, yeah, we figured it out. This guy here. We have another situation here where we cannot see the health bar. Initial value. And that was a four byte, I think. So this time we're probably looking for a float if our pattern here makes sense. Yeah, see 10.1. So um, I'm going to do a new scan for my non value. This would be a float. Decreased. And it's decreased. All right, I think we got it right here at the top. We go and I did that just by looking to see which values changed after I hit the attack button um, and uh, which ones moved in a direction that made sense because the red values are the ones that have changed uh, but it doesn't make any sense if you hit somebody with the rocket it ducks them for 10.1 uh, to go from 7.39 etc to negative 1.18 so this one we can see. What's the trick here? This is a float. Okay. Let's see. Oh. Uh, this might not be a float. Okay. 
doing an exact value match for all types. 5,572. Oh, there we go. What is it? A double. Okay, that's why I didn't come up when we searched for floats. But if we match that value, we can see yeah, it's a double. So. All right, this last one is the one I didn't do. Um, and I didn't do it because I wasn't sure what the deal was. Because, like you can see, there's no boss. This isn't like the other ones. Um, and I didn't realize that these doors were actually doors because I hadn't played the game yet. But now I understand. The purpose of this tutorial is for Squally to teleport over here to the door through this wall. And there's a couple of ways we could do that. Uh, there is, I recall from when I was messing around with this in Ghidra, there is an on collision um, function, which I'm guessing we can probably mess with that, and then there is no collision and we can just walk right through. Uh, but since we're on memory editing, the tutorial, my guess is that we need to find Squally's X, Y, Z coordinates and then teleport him along the Y coordinate. I suppose it's 2D, so there's no X, Y, Z, it's just X and Y. So, never mind. But we don't know how that's stored since it'll be an unknown initial value. And the thing is, is we also don't know in which direction. Um, these values will be moving, right? We don't know, for example, if zero is over here. Uh, probably I can't see it because if zero is over here on the right side, um, then moving this way decreases that number. Moving this way increases that number. But if zero is over here on the left, and moving this way increases the number, and moving this way decreases the number. We have no idea what our current coordinates are, so we don't know which direction the, uh, the values will be moving when we do this. So we're just going to have to take a guess, right? Um, so we're going to do an unknown initial value. Well, we already did that. We found uh, 397,705,216. So we're going to go and search first for increased values. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to just move a little bit and we'll move scan. And we're going to move a little bit and we're going to do a scan. So now we also have actually something else uh, complicating this for us in that Squally is not the only object on our screen that is moving. We also have the rocket ship and we have Guano down here. Um, they're moving too, right? So any and they're moving with us. So weeding out their position and our position uh, could be a little bit harder, throws them to a bit of a curveball at us, but I think that we can manage. All right, now we're going to go with a decreased value, and we're going to kind of uh, go back and forth here to try and randomize this a bit to keep us from, to eliminate as many coincidences as possible. We want the results that we get to, uh, to at least coincide with the activity that we are doing that. So if we move just a little bit, all right, so that, that would be a good one to scan on because the robot moved one way, Squally moved another. So the robot's position would decrease and ours would increase, assuming, of course, that we are actually even dealing um, with the right directions here. This could take a while. Let's decrease. Down to 2,000, but we're not losing too many more. Now, see, all of these seem to be moving together. So we've got 2,000 addresses that seem to increase and decrease in sync with each other. So now Squally will hold still. Now what we're going to do is we're going to fill the route unchanged values. Because these are, these are moving up. Um, and Squally's not, I mean, he's floating. He's not moving that much. Okay, apparently he's moving enough uh, where that's not going to cut it. So, all right. Unknown initial value. Here we go again. Right in place. 
172, use them slowly. Three thousand. We're going to do this again. This will be a value. From 1959, and it's looking very much like it did before. All right, so this is still uh, not a good place to do um, I'm just going to look at the values and see what makes sense. Um, it being a float makes the most sense. Uh, but this value right here. That looks pretty promising. Four digits. It seems to decrease as it should. And then, yeah, I think this might be it. Uh, this value right here. So around here, it's stat uh, static at 2,000. 240 or 2224. Best way to check, by the way, uh, is to go over here and then we'll hold this static and try moving. No, that's not it. I can still move. Let's try this one right here. I can still move. Make that one either. By holding these static, essentially what it should do is it should move that variable back to that position, effectively holding spalling in place. Um, let's grab a couple of these that look like they are in that format. And it should just filter out everything but the folks. Let's try one of these. So Squally is not frozen in place. So this is not those values roll over. I am going to um well let's try a couple more. I yeah, actually you know what I'm gonna do a new scan. And instead of all I think we're looking for a float. I'm gonna assume we are. So a float with an unknown initial value and a so scan 99 million. If I can't find it going this way, well, then we'll just try inverting our increase and decrease and see what happens then. Oops. Seven hundred and thirty. All right, let's start. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and these. Yeah, I'm going to add. Just gonna do this trial and error style. We're gonna do this oops, oops of them at a time. And if we don't see them, then for sure we're not looking for a float because I didn't bet that we grabbed it in this one of these. They all have very similar values too, which is not really voting well for me. Um, because why would this many addresses if they're associated with coordinates for user projects? Is they... Oh, it is one of those. 
Well, hot damn. All right, let's go back up to the top and let's try this group. Let's try this group. Let's try this group. See how it's methodical and trial and error. I'm sure maybe there's other people out there that can get this more of a science, but uh, okay, here we are. This is the group. Let us unfreeze. Um, it's half. It's in here somewhere. It's half. It's getting closer, everybody. Oh, who finds it? There we go. Squally. Uh, y, I think, is this to be the Y coordinate, yeah. Now, odd, it is a very similar value to all of these other variables. I have no idea what all of these are associated with. If we find out what scans for this address, yes, it's attached to one group. Squally Cocos. Position. Get position. Okay, I don't know, it makes sense. But then what access is this? Does not say. Hmm. Alright. Fair enough. That's fine. Uh I'm assuming that it is a position value for something. It's too many values that Guano and the robots uh, positions also don't account for these because we have six hundred and ninety six hundred and eighty-nine addresses that seem to be associated with coordinates here. But I have no idea who's cool. So let's increase this by so let's go from 22, 24 to 24, 24. It's oh, not, not far enough. We're going to have to be 27. There we go. Oh, all right. That was a new kind of challenge. All right, there's only one challenge left, and there's a hex editing challenge. Uh, now, I'm assuming that means that I'm going to have to use a hex editor on Squally in order to change a value. Uh, let's see. What else? Use a hex editor to modify your build and buy the most expensive card. Okay, well, I don't see why we have to use a hex editor. It seems like we can scan for that. I have 1,000 now. And we're doing it all on this because I don't necessarily know that it's a four byte value. It should be. I'm gonna say I'm just gonna do a four byte value. It should be. And then if I buy this now, it has decreased compared to the first game. Uh, okay. <laughs> maybe it's not a four byte value. Or, or maybe maybe it's a different thing entirely. Let's do a first scan. 580 is our value. We're going to do all types this time. And we have 988. So let's do another Zor. 60. So let's do a decreased value compared to the first scan. And we're down to 292. We don't have enough money to buy another one. So we'd have to throw in the towel and start scanning over again. Uh, this might be a good opportunity for me to do an exact value search. Eh? Just gonna scan with my eyes quick and see if I can see anything with a value of 160. Oh, there we go. Looks like you got it to me. Yep. Or maybe not. Increasing that did not increase our total. Although they did seem to be related. That's an awful big coincidence. There's other... Let's see it writes to this Ah, that's right. We have nothing, nothing moving yet. That's what we said. Yeah, that's totally associated with our goal. Look at that. It changed. Um, so, okay, so this is where our, move, our uh, money is going to Okay, um, 
sorry, uh, let's see what we're looking at here then is uh, we have, here's our move. What's in EAX? Um, that uh, I gave us a zero. That's not what they're looking for. I didn't want to knob it. No, I didn't want to knob it. Ah. Yeah, that should be the pointers on the side. It didn't like the value? Or what? Can you see what I'm doing right now? No, you can't. I'm, I'm looking at the uh, the uh, what writes to this address for that value, and uh, I see the assembly for... Um, moving the gold back to 1,000. Um, and uh, instead of moving uh, that value, I moved the, tried to move the raw value 2,000 into that address, and uh, it just knopped it for some reason, which you can knop things with uh, with uh, Cheat Engine by just clicking, on, uh, right clicking on it and saying, you know, replace. Uh, but... Didn't tell it to not any of this, so I'm going to try first bringing it back to what it was. Oh, it's still calling it a knob. I did not tell you to do that, cheat engine. All right, we're going to have to restart scrolling here. I could just use a hex editor as it all. Oh, could just use a hex editor as it says we should. Oh. Attention back to the spelling process. All oh, these values. Let's get rid of all these. Oh, well, let me get rid of this. Um, now you should be able to see what I'm doing. All right, so uh, I'm searching for uh, the value of 1,000. That's our code gold. Let's do a scan. Do a decreased value because we're going to buy the zero bar, which gives us 580. So we'll do our first scan, next scan. We've got 310. Last one was pretty close here to the bottom, so yep, here we have 580 from 1,000. That looks pretty promising. But if I add that value, see, it does not change in the game, although we have written to that memory address. So we will find out what writes to this address. Attention debugger to process. Here we go, and then we'll hit this reset button. To cheat engine, we can see here we have the uh, assembly instructions for what that button does. Basically, we press the button and it moves the value of EAX into the ESI, which is our uh, value here of, in, our, in our goals. So, um, what I tried to do last time is edit this instruction so that, uh, so we hit the replace button and uh, it changed this to knob and I could not unshake it. So, I could change it back. I mean. Uh, the value of the pointer needed to find this address is probably OE6F. OE6F20F20. Yeah, that's the same one I just said. Uh, so with EAX in this case is a 
Oops, let me get my hex out again and see if I can. I shouldn't be able to edit it like that. The restriction here after the instruction is executed. This is the sweetest too. So it reads our current. So it reads our current value and then moves in. No, because this is move. EDI, it's EDI. Yeah, that's our that's our address. Um, so it reads our current inventory of gold. Is that a DEAX? And then it moves. No, it's not doing that though. It's definitely not. I should probably just do it instead and just use a hex editor, but now I would like to see what's this address. Uh it's not what I'm looking for on top. Nothing. Okay. Um, all right, that's fine. Let's uh let's open up a hex editor and see what we get. Uh one sec. Alright, so I do not see any uh DLLs or anything in the squally directory of Steam, Steam Apps Com Squally. There is uh the there's a launcher binary, there's a squally binary, there are manifest files for both, there are IFKs for both, and there are PDBs for both. So it makes um, uh, debugging them, uh, de disassembling them in Kijira much easier. Uh, there is a Steam API DLL, but I'm pretty sure that's not something that I need to mess with here. There are also assets in the folder under private. There's a cipher folder, platform point to trace looks like assets for the game, including a hexis folder and public assets. It looks more or less the same, but uh, nothing uh, that would be, for example, game game logic or anything. So it must be in the box, right? Um, so what we're looking for, I guess, is we will look for. Uh, see if we search for the value of one thousand. My goodness, um, we are going to find so much um and uh let me see oh, that's not it um that's this one okay thought it was Okay. Which one is it? Oh, it's this one. Oh, 
could have sworn it was that one. Okay, apparently not. Um, Oh. I, I wasn't I I swear I was oh sick. Okay. This is the one problem I have with Cheat Engine is the UI uh, is it gets buried uh, with all of the windows that pop up. All right, so EAX contains the value 1000. That's what's being moved here, um, obviously. That's getting moved into uh, ESI, which is the... Okay, so this must be the address then for our um, wallets. It's not, though. EDI is the value for the wallet, it seems, but uh, we cannot edit that value. So anyway, what I was getting at is we can search through a uh, hex editor for the value 1000, but we are probably going to find quite a few. Let's search for oops, hex values. Let's search in all directions. Right, so there's one. That's it. There are no other instances. Okay. Uh, I feel like that might be a little bit too easy. All right. So 3E8 is uh, 1,000. 2,000 is 7 d Uh, I am going to, of course, need to um, quit squalling for this. Uh, oh. Let's open it for right access then. Uh, so, and there, let's see what that does. And there didn't seem to do it. Oh, see, it did. I knew there would be more than one value. I could probably find in Kidra a little bit easier. I could find the code for. Um, Tutorial. Um, and find it in there. I knew there would be a lot of these. I knew. I just knew. Ah, all right. I got. I think I'm gonna get Ghidra open. In a sec. Um, I decided uh, rather than opening up Ghidra, um, I was thinking that um, chances of that value being in the squally binary are pretty low. 
um, chances are more likely that it's in a save file. And I say that because when I worked it up earlier, it remembered the zero value that I had. So uh, guessing it's in the save file. So I went uh, searching and it turns out that quality save files are in app data local. Um, and I found a global squaw. There's also a profile zero squaw and a profile 99 squaw. Uh, profile zero is, I'm guessing, my profile is by far the largest. Um, but I dumped a global squaw in here just to see what the data structure is like, I guess. Um, and we have some interesting stuff here. Um, we have wins for pretty much everybody that we battled, wins for the different puzzles. Uh, we have uh, wins, say, lead to turn. Which I guess is what we're looking for, I reckon. Uh, so let's drop our profile zero in there and see what we have for values to compare. Let's just uh, tutorial D access wins tutorial access wins tutorial B tutorial A so this must be a hexus tutorial so the keys up yeah we got a lot more data here in this one um, spikes um, Training here. I'm going to search for our uh, value here. Okay. Okay. Is that what I had? I have a thousand. Alright, it's, it's not in here as I thought it was. Let me call this. Let's see. Let's try searching for instead. Tutorial. Access losses tutorial. Access wins SA tutorial. So, let say access wins tutorial. Okay. Give me another minute with this. Oh, I can't see what I'm doing. Oh, yes, I can. Give me another minute with this. I think I'm onto something here. Uh, I don't know. I thought I could have gave myself a second to think without uh, the pressure of the recording that would kind of come to me. Um, still feel like this is the right direction. Uh, let me verify if this is the right direction. I'm going to this, and this, and then not resetting, but just leaving. Okay, that value is the same. And if I leave, and back. Yes. I'm on to something. Um... But, uh, did that save file just now updates? Yes, it did. Let me open this. And what is the X version of the search back to the two four or two four four, sorry. Okay. Well, shit, are you in here or not?
Gold is in this one. Gold, gold is in global. Save key. Gold. Um. Two four four. Oh, ah, that's why I couldn't find it. It's not two four four in. It would be four four o oh, two. The digits. Oh, fucking idiot. Okay. My bad. My bad. The the when the numbers are represented in. Uh, and hex like this when the variables are saved it's going to be saved in byte pairs with the last bytes or last digits first so this would actually be 07 and e zero and let me get out a small e. Actually, I'm not sure if I even have to. This might be fine the way it is. And then I'm going to just back out and get back in. And then I'm going to restart some more. Hmm. Okay, maybe not. Maybe not. So let me just go over and make sure I didn't make any mistakes here. So this, the, these numbers are going to need four byte, four byte values. We already know that we were looking through Cheat Engine. We found, uh, we found it before. One under four byte values. And this is two, two over here. Okay. This is. Oh, um, I see. Uh, yeah, uh, I got a 12 over here, byte pair 1 and 2, which puts my in 32 value way higher than it ought to be. Uh, so change that. That looks better. Okay, uh, but this is global. I probably have something similar in. I know, because I searched for golden. Oops. Search for golden. I didn't see anything. Save key is open. Save key is open. Save key is open. Save key is open. So it's going to be raised. I don't think that uh, this profile contains that. I'm on to something. I know it. Uh,
Um, I'm not giving up on it yet. I, I'm smelling. I'm smelling a solution. I uh, just gotta figure this out. Um, I don't think that the global is the answer, though. Although it's the only one that contains this. Although that's, I'm only thinking that because this is the one um, that says gold, and that doesn't necessarily mean anything. But then I was also like, anyway. All right. So now that I know that I was making a mistake, the numbers are displayed. I'm going to search for the current amount of gold I have, which is five PD. Um, they're uh, they're displayed in the little indie, which is what I was saying before when I made a mistake. This is a hex editor, um, and it's yeah, it's going to be in little indie. I was searching for two four four in big indie, right? That's the hex value for five hundred eighty. Unless I'm getting that wrong too. Two hundred eighty, yes, two four four. Um, uh, so actually, no, I don't even have to do that. I can actually search for 580, and it should, yes, little Indian, uh, and it should find it. Okay. Uh, let's see what we get. Um, and this is in the profiles. Let's say key. Feels found. Oh, okay. That's not really cool. Uh, access losses, elf, puzzle, Yes, found. This is not any of these. Alright, I don't have a lot of hope for finding that in. Uh, well, well, maybe. Oh, here's. Oh no, that can't be. No, no way. No, oh, okay. All right. I was going to say, there's no way that that's it. Um, so we have to, and that's, that's it, though. Although, uh, that would put the next world right, so this would actually be... So this would actually be the next four bytes, though. Although, I don't have that much gold either, so... Oops. Should change my goals and see if I can find a value. Yeah, let's do that. Let's go back into the game. I just searched for 580, but let's go change. Let's see. Let me reset this actually. 158 is actually a nice weird number, so. Oops, that's too many. It should be C A. Oh, 
Oh, that did. Oh, that did change. That is my gold amount. It was right there. It's in. Uh, I bet that's in. It. it was right there the whole time, right in front of me. Oh, come on. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm very happy to have solved it. But, uh... <sighs> okay, that's it. That was the last challenge. That one was kind of a doozy. Uh, I feel like I really got in my way most of the time on that last one. Which is not unusual for me. I'm used to it. But, uh... Man, that was... That was something else. I, I, I could have solved that so much faster if I had just thought of that sooner. Uh, yeah, that was all me. I, I made that way harder than it needed to be. Um, oh, whatever. Well, that's it for, for Squally. Uh, that's our last part. We did all of the tutorials. There's really nothing else to see right now. And at the moment, it doesn't look like there's going to be a lot more anytime soon. But if they do update it, I will absolutely play the rest of it. Um, I think next I'm going to move on to uh, another game because I'm having fun. Um, you know, Squally was fun. Pwn Adventure 3 was fun. I want to keep trying and, and do some other ones. And I found Hack and Slash, which I think is kind of up this alley. Um, but I, I don't know. I guess we'll find out. I'll play at least a little bit of it. And if it's not what I think it is, then we'll move on to something else. All right. Thanks. See you on the next one then.